Pennsylvania lawsuit together. And there's been a bunch of filings on the docket in the case. One of them is a motion to intervene, which means that um, somebody wants to come in and, and also be heard on the case. And it's a bunch of different groups. Um, the complaint that they file or the motion that they filed is it's all about COVID and disenfranchisement and stuff like that. And the NAACP, the Pennsylvania State Conference, the Black Political Empowerment Project, Common Cause Pennsylvania, the League of Women Voters of Pennsylvania, individuals who have filed affidavits. Just bear with me on this, okay? Bear with me a second. I want to show you first the complaint, and I have double-checked this with the actual election law, and I can tell you it is absolutely 100% legit. What's in... This is... The, okay, one of the aspects of Trump's President Trump's lawsuit against the state of Pennsylvania is that they allowed certain districts against election law contacted voters before they contacted voters to cure their um, ballots. And that's not allowed. So here, here, let's just we're going to read through really quickly some of the some of the the law here, just so that you guys understand. The enactment, the, there was an, an Act 77 was enacted just recently in October of, of 2019. And they voted on all this stuff through the legislature and stuff like that. And then it went to suit and whatever. But at the end of the day, the election law was codified inside of Act 77. And it bars the counting of an absentee or mail-in ballot that lacks an official election ballot or contains an envelope with any text, mark, or symbol which reveals the identity of the elector, their political affiliation, their candidate preference, or doesn't contain a declaration that is signed. And the Supreme Court in Pennsylvania recently reaffirmed that ballots that va voters have filled out incompletely or incorrectly shall be set aside, declared void, and election boards are not permitted to afford these voters a notice and opportunity to cure procedure to remedy such defects. This was just this year that this lawsuit went through. I want you guys to pay very close attention to what's about to happen here, okay? I I I swear to you, I've checked this four or five times. I'm I'm right here. I almost can't believe it because it's that absurd. Okay. It says the Bukvar Court further concluded that a mail-in ballot that is not enclosed in the statutorily mandated secrecy envelope must be disqualified. However, in contrast to prior provisions of the electric code, election code, all absentee and mail-in ballots are no longer sent to polling places on election day and are no longer inspected by the local election boards or subject to challenge by watchers at polling places. Instead, Act 77 mandates that all properly cast absentee and mail-in ballots are to be safely kept in sealed or locked containers at the County Board of Elections until they're canvassed by the county election boards. Additionally, it's important, listen, Act 77 requires that no earlier than 7 o'clock a.m. on Election Day, the county boards of elections shall meet to conduct a pre-canvas of all absentee and mail-in ballots received to that meeting. Election Code Section 1308. During the pre-canvas, the election official shall inspect and open the envelopes of all absentee and mail-in ballots, remove such ballots from such envelopes, and count, compute, and tally the votes reflected on such ballots. However, as part of the pre-canvas, the county election boards are prohibited from recording or publishing the votes reflected on the ballots that are pre-canvassed. Further, contrary to prior provisions of Election Code Act 77 mandates that the county boards of elections are to meet no earlier than the close of polls on Election Day and no later than the third day following the election to begin canvassing absentee and mail-in ballots. Um, there's more here, but I think that you get it. You're not allowed to look at these things the day before, the day before, before, the day before, before, before of the election and then contact people to fix their ballots. But what's happened here is that these intervening groups have submitted affidavits 
that state that they were contacted before Election Day to fix their votes. So they have literally submitted af- signed affidavits from Democratic voters complaining that their vote will be disenfranchised if this all goes through with the Trump campaign that admit that PA contacted them before Election Day to correct their mail-in ballot. Does everybody understand? I.e., the Trump suit alleges that counties in, in PA that are listed on the lawsuit illegally against California election law, which is right here and very clear, contacted voters to cure their ballots against the law. And then the intervening groups filed on the court docket absentee voters affidavits who are testifying to the fact that they were contacted before November 3rd to cure their ballots. Whoops. Seriously? I had to really seriously read this 700 times. I'm 73 year old and identify as white. I understand my age puts me at risk of serious complications from COVID. I avoid contacts with strangers as much as possible as a result. I chose to vote via mail-in ballot this year to avoid unnecessary exposure to crowds on election day. I don't remember exactly when I received my mail-in ballot, but it was several weeks ago. I returned it right away. I asked the postal worker to timestamp it before I walked away to make sure it was sent because of how much my vote matters to me. Between Sunday and Monday, November 1st and November 2nd, I received three calls from the Democratic Party notifying me that my ballot had been rejected. Pennsylvania, PA, Pennsylvania election law. I apologize if there was a, uh, (laughs) there was a mistake. I asked why and they told me they didn't know. They instructed me to visit the voting center in Norristown to cure it. What? The hell is this debauchery? (laughs) I never received a call from any election official to inform me that my ballot had been rejected. The first site I visited in Norristown was a drop-off only site. They told me I had to go to another site to see and cure my ballot. At the second site, I learned that my ballot has been marked as defective because I didn't write my name and address in non-cursive print. I was not aware that I was supposed to handwrite my name and address in non-cursive print next to where that information was already pre-printed on the envelope. Because the exact information was already there, I understood it would have been redundant to write it out again. My ballot was signed, dated, and otherwise complied with all other ballot instructions. To cure my ballot, I showed the county employee, the county employee, my ID, added my information next to where it was pre-printed, and left. I told the employee that I would not leave the building until I was certain my vote counted. Um, if I found out my vote, well, I didn't think to use a provisional ballot because I wasn't aware I could. As far as I knew, curing my ballot in Norristown was the only way I could ensure my vote counted. If I found out my vote would be thrown out over this, I would be devastated. Voting is very important to me, and I drove to a different town and then to multiple buildings just to cure my ballot. I did it in the pouring rain. Here. I'm a 77-year-old black man. I originally completed and returned to election officials in my county a mail-in ballot in mid-October. The ballot was rejected because I failed to include the secrecy envelope. I learned it was rejected because election officials called me the day before election day to let me know that the ballot would not count. After learning my first ballot was not accepted, I went to the elections office so I could understand what was going on. They showed me an example of the required secrecy envelope, but this envelope was not included with my mail-in ballot. They told me to vote in person. On election day, I cast a provisional ballot at my local polling place. Here's Merrill Lara. In the November 2020 election, I originally completed and mailed to election officials in my county a mail ballot on the 22nd or the 23rd of October. It was canceled or rejected because I failed to place it inside the secrecy envelope. I learned it because I received an email from election officials, an email 
from election officials stating that my ballot was missing a second envelope. I tried calling the number provided, but didn't get through to anyone. What? What? I can't. No earlier than 7 o'clock a.m. on Election Day, the County Board of Elections shall meet to conduct a pre-canvas of all absentee and mail-in ballots received to that meeting. On Election Day. This is the law. The law says (laughs) that they can't meet any earlier than on Election Day. And then there's affidavits from Democrat voters from these interveners saying that they were called by county election officials days before election day to cure their ballots. Does anyone else see this for what? <laughs> this is bad. Like they these interveners just completely destroyed any hope that Pennsylvania may have had. I hope that somebody is understanding this on the attorney team for the president because they literally just submitted their own voters sworn affidavits that the law was broken. (laughs) I'm sorry I'm laughing. I just can't believe how stupid these people are. (laughs) What the hell? Ballots are no longer sent to polling places. They're no longer inspected by local election boards. They have to all be safely kept in sealed or locked containers. Um, voters, this Pennsylvania Supreme Court recently reaffirmed in 2020 that ballots that voters have filled out incompletely or incorrectly shall be set aside and declared void and election boards are not permitted to afford these voters a notice and opportunity to cure And here is a sworn affidavit from Joseph Aini claiming that election workers called him before election day to cure his ballot. Whoops. It's not glee. It's utter shock. It's almost like I can't believe what I'm reading. Like they literally I can't. I Hey. You know, sometimes things just have a way of working themselves out, I guess. I don't know what else to say. They literally admitted in sworn affidavits from witnesses that county officials broke election law, just like the complaint that Donald Trump has filed claims. So... That's all I've got right now. I'm going to write this up. I'm going to get it out on the website. I'm going to do a Twitter thread on it. Thank you to the NAACP, the Pennsylvania State Conference, the Black Political Empowerment Project, Common Cause Pennsylvania, the League of Women Voters of Pennsylvania, John Aini, Lucia Gajda, Stephanie Higgins, Meryl Lara, Ricardo Morales, Natalie Price, Tim Stevens, and Taylor Stover for officially acknowledging that the counties in this lawsuit broke the law when they reached out to you days before the election to cure your mail-in ballots because they were wrong. Have a great day, everyone. If you'd like to support the work that I do, you can find me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Tracy Beans, or you can go to uncoverdc.com and click on the support button to support us. Also, you can find... um, me on Subscribestar at subscribestar.com slash Jason I just, I don't know. It is what it is. Bye. <laughs>